familiar foes reunite as the number one ranked Florida Gators travel to Tallahassee to take on the number two ranked Florida State Seminoles in a 1996 showdown. Welcome to Dope Campbell Stadium, where commentators Keith Jackson and Bob Greasy await the opening kick here on ESPN Classic. Couldn't be a better day, and we're just about set to go. Mac Gentry is uh, the head of an all-ACC officiating team. Scott Bentley will kick it off for the red-shirted home team. Elijah Williams and Jacques Green and Ike Hilliard are deep people. It's Hilliard 19 and Elijah Williams who are the deepest. And they have to hold the ball on the tee because of the wind. And uh, Bentley knocks it beyond the field of play. And it'll come out for the 20. First down for the Florida Gators. Danny Werfel is the most, one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the country. And as you look at his numbers on the year, I should tell you in his career, he's thrown 105 touchdown passes. Number 19 for the Chili's starting lineup, backs and receivers. Ike Hilliard has 120 career catches. The Florida receivers do something with the ball after they catch it. That is emphasized every day they practice. So here we go. Fred Taylor will open up in the backfield. They've got three wide outs, two at the top, a little quick snap pop to the top of the screen, and you've got a seven-yard pickup by Riddell Anthony, the junior from South Bay, Florida, number 15. You'll see him a lot. The offensive front for Florida, very young tackles. Number 70, Cooper Carlisle's a freshman, and number 79, Mo Collins is a sophomore. They have to deal with those two defensive ends of Florida State. They are terrific. It'll be second down and three from the 27. Ball is handed off to Taylor. And Taylor is taken down with authority. Darrell Bush among the tacklers. Bush playing in the middle of that Florida State defense as the middle linebacker is the captain of that bunch. I mean, he guides the whole crowd. Chevin Smith, a strong safety, has played very well. He has three defensive touchdowns in the secondary. Don't get that very often. It is now third and a long one. Just about a yard and a half. Werfel back to throw it. Has a man open. Anthony, first down, 41-yard line. Popped in the back hard by Shevin Smith, but he held the ball. What Florida is doing, Keith, they've got three wide receivers in the game. Shevin Smith, number 30, is a strong safety trying to cover a wide receiver. Florida and the Gators will take that matchup all day long. It was a late. Ball, ball, personal foul, defense. So it came after the play was over. I think when I identified Mac Gentry, I said ACC. That is a Southeastern Conference officiating team. And we'll run down the other guys when we have a chance. So add on the personal foul penalty, and suddenly the Florida Gators are in business at the Florida State 44-yard line, and Bobby's concerned. Bobby knows well how quickly these guys can strike and how important that first score can be. They go to the shotgun, and Werfel unloads it quickly. Give the man enough time to get himself squared upfield, and he does it well. Fred Taylor is a 220 two-pound junior from Bell Glade and you can move the chains again that's another Gator first down well the Gators have been in the same offensive formation the first three or four plays and defensively Florida State's been the same defense Spurrier saw it cracked back on the man that was supposed to be covering Taylor Spurrier sees the defense and makes the right call to take advantage of it so Werfel has hit his first three passes totals 38 yards and it's first down at the 25-yard line of Florida State. Taylor's the deep man. Werfel circles, throws for the corner, and it'll be picked off. 
The man for whom the pass was intended never got down. Waddell, Anthony, and I, Hilliard were the two wides, and, and Hilliard never got where the ball was thrown. He cut it off before uh, the ball was on its way, and uh, it was an easy interception for Shevin Smith. Well, you called it correctly, Keith. It gets flushed out of the pocket. The receiver to the left side, outside of the screen, stopped his pattern. And from the look that Spurrier was talking with Werfel, it may have been Werfel's fault. So the Seminoles get the ball back. No score. So Steve Spurrier shaking his head after a conversation with his quarterback and the wide receiver. Hard to know which man the wide receiver broke it off and uh, the ball was thrown deep and it was intercepted. And here comes Florida State now. First down at their own 20-yard line. Warwick Dunn obviously is the man deep in the eye formation with Thad Busby, the quarterback, and Dunn has the ball. This is the fellow that the Florida Gators have to take out of the ball game if they can. He picks up three yards on that carry. Turnovers are such a key in this game. Go back to the interception. Watch as the receiver is going to be jammed right here by Capers. Sometimes there's an option route, Keith. You have the option to run the corner or to break it off to the sideline. The quarterback and the wide receiver have to read the coverage the same way. Werfel threw it dip, deep. The receiver broke it sharp. Second down and seven for the Seminoles. The ball on the 23. And Busby looked like he changed the play. Give it to Dunn. He's working in the traffic and pops free. That's why the Florida Gators have to get a handle on Warwick Dunn. First down, Seminoles at the 48-yard line. And talking to Bob Stoops, the defensive coordinator for the Gators, number one, take Warwick Dunn out of the game. Stop his running from behind the offense. Pooh Bear Williams, 22. Jones, number 78, doing a nice job. And when you get in the secondary one-on-one -on -one with Warwick Dunn, he is going to beat you. Bob Stoops, the defensive coordinator, came in from Kansas State, has done a nice job with this defense for the Gators. So done, two plays, one big, first down, Knowles, he's got it again. And this time the Gators get him behind the line of scrimmage. That's a good defensive play by Florida. And they take him down back at the 46-yard line. Ed Chester made the play. Busby has only 15 touchdowns versus the 12 interceptions. He's 10-0, however, as a starter. Warwick Dunn, number 28, he's the generator of the FSU defense, and he is now over 1,000 yards for the season. He's done it three successive years. That's the Chili's starting lineup. Backs and receivers for the Florida State Seminoles. So from the 46, it is now second down and 12, and the first pass from Busby is off the hands of Warwick Dunn. He's involved literally in every play in some sense. You've got to know where he is. The offensive front, Todd Fordham had to move over to a guard position from the tackle when Chad Bates went down hurt. Trey Thomas moved up to his offensive tackle starting position. The defensive front, number 44, James Bates, is the anchor of that Gator defense. Very aggressive defense. And so on third down and 12 now, it reads pass. And the Gators are right up there to bump. And here comes pressure. The pass is away down the middle, and it is caught. At the 39-yard line of Florida by E.G. Green. That a very good throw. So the interception in the end zone helped Florida State gain some confidence. Now, a big confidence booster right here for Thad Busby. A square in by Green. Pretty good coverage. Bates on a little blitz, a delayed blitz. He saw his man was blocking, so he goes in and rushes. He gets picked up very nicely there by Warwick Dunn. Big throw for uh, Busby, first completion. At the Florida. 39, first down. Back he goes to throw it again. Gets it off, and this time it is incomplete. It was intended for Peter Warwick, number nine, defended by Shea Showers, the free safety, or the center fielder. Their defensive backs 
for Florida. That's a very good secondary. Key man in that group is Lawrence Wright. I mean, he's one of the best in the country at that strong safety. You find him oftentimes right up along the line of scrimmage. He makes a lot of difference, Keith. He's tough on the run, tough against the pass, and a great leader. Second down and 10 from the 39. Busby calling the play. Kind of hard in a crowd of more than 80,000. Most of them are Seminole fans, and this is Warwick Dunn. He disappeared in the stack, but he just kept on pumping, and all of a sudden, he surfaces and shows up next at the 22-yard line, first down. From behind the defense, running to their left side behind Long and Jones. He is small. You can't see him in there. He gets lost, but you got to bring him down. He keeps it alive. He's only 5'9", 185 pounds. I don't know if he's that big, Keith. I don't think so. Doesn't look it. But he's a solid fellow. And I mean a solid person. First down at the 22-yard line. Done again. A little skip step gets him past the first man and puts him down at the 16. That'll be a six-yard pickup. Gator defense came into this ball game, Keith, uh, pretty good against the run. They were third in the SEC, allowing only 110 runs yards per game on the ground. Well, they're going to have to hunker down because if the Florida State Seminoles can run the ball this effectively, oh. just occasionally, they got a problem. You know, you know Bobby's smiling on the sideline with this drive here, especially what he's getting on the ground. Second down and four, back to Dunn, up the middle. That's where it's happening, and he's down to the 11. That'll be another Florida State first down. Bobby doesn't call the plays anymore. Mark Rick upstairs calls him. That is an astounding uh, It's unbelievable. Right ten wins, ten straight years. From behind the defense, it's a nice block there by Fordham, 71. The offensive line, uh, Keith, doing a great job. Kevin Long, Marcus Long, and Fordham in the center, especially. In the middle of the line, just knocking him right off the ball. Six carries for Dunn, 54 yards. And a penalty flag from the referee before the snap. So while Mr. Gentry marks this one, I'll tell you that Butch Hanna is the umpire. Bert Ackerman, uh, the head linesman. Don Shanks, field judge. James Bing. Ball start. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. The line judge and Bobby I.A., the side judge, back judge is Stan Murray They're from the SEC. Hubert Williams, number 22 in the backfield for Florida State. He's 286 pounds. He's a fullback, and he's showing you right now in this possession he's a pretty good blocking back. Well, that's what he's in there for, Keith. He has not been the starter all year. He's kind of been up and down. He had an injury early in the year. He's in there to block. Make no mistake about it. First down and 15 as the ball comes back to the 16-yard line. Given again to uh, Rock Preston, the tailback. Warwick Dunn getting a bit of a breather. It was Rock Preston in 94 who scored that tying touchdown that resulted in a 31 tie between these two teams. And Rock is in there and picked up a couple of yards. It'll be second down. And about 13. Dunn's back. Got to drink the cold water and got his wind, and he's back. Going to the right side is Andre Cooper. You got double wide top of the screen, and now you got a timeout. That has been the Warwick Dunn show since the Florida State Seminoles got their hands on the football. This will be at the 13 yard line and second down and uh, about 12. Florida State in with four wide receivers. Out of the shotgun, they'll hand it to Dunn. He tries to bounce to the outside. Can't get away. Run down on the play by number 54, Willie Rogers. 
Husby's pass to the outside to Dunn coming out of the backfield. Oh, that's a good defensive play. He was very close to getting into the end zone. But Anton Lott, the corner on that side, held him. Lott's 5'9", 193 pounds, and he got a hold of a hind leg and would not turn loose. You're right on, Hoss, because if he doesn't, he's out in the open field with Warwick Dunn. If he doesn't come down with him, he's going to walk in. Scott Bentley for the three now. It'll be held by Travis Chambers and snapped by Clay Ingram. It'll be a 26-yard try. And Bentley has had a terrific senior season. 15 out of 17 on the year. This one's up and down the highway of the Florida State Seminole. Go to the lead. The game stories for Florida, they've got the best scoring offense, but Florida State has the nation's number one defense. Who wins that? And also shut down Warwick Dunn. The first drive, Dunn had 51 yards and caught a pass for another eight yards. Dunn's got the advantage so far. Scott Bentley to kick it off for the Seminoles. Ike Hilliard and Elijah Williams, 19 and 25 respectively, are waiting for it. The wind knocks it off the tee again, so they'll have to hold it. This is the third time this season the Florida Gators have trailed in a football game. They trailed to Vanderbilt 3 to nothing, and they were behind South Carolina 0-6. All early in the game, I guess. Yes. And the four-yard line, it's Hilliard. Hole up the middle. Out for the 40. They opened up a nice alley for him right up the middle. First down from the 40. The pressure coming from the other side. And not a whole lot there. Fred Taylor is the man who started the game. Fred Taylor and Terry Jackson are the bigger of the Florida running backs. Elijah Williams, maybe a half a step quicker, better receiver. Uh, at 185 pounds, the other back. The Florida offensively look at the right side. In the nation, they're first in scoring, second in total, and fifth passing the ball. That was a little, uh, looked like a little shovel pass. Yeah, it was. Terry Jackson is in there right now. They lost two yards on it. Been better if he'd erupt it. Werfel flushed. Danny Werfel is not going to beat you with his feet. Now, as he ran out of there, you've got a penalty flag down on the field, back where he was. So, let's see about that call. Some of the big uglies got tangled up back there. Holding, Holding Florida. Florida. Talking with Steve the other day, he said early in the game especially, he wanted to throw three-step drop, quick throw, quick passing, get into the game and not get the sacks and stay away from those two defensive ends. So from the spot of the foul, that uh, winds up a 15-yard penalty. And it'll be second down and 27 now. 5.35 to play in the first quarter. Florida State leading 3 to nothing. Gators haven't done much yet. Werfel hands the ball off. This is Taylor trying to get started and finally does. And gets a little bit of it, but great pursuit by the Seminoles. And he's out of bounds about the 27-yard line. Here's Swanee. Well, Keith, you were talking about the University of Florida offensive line scoring the quick pass. Part of that is to help that line out because in all of 1995, their starting group started all 13 ball games for them. But 1996, counting today's game, this is the sixth different lineup that they have had. They've had to move people around because of injuries and suspicion. The only player for them that started all the games last year and this year, number 75, right guard, Donnie Young. Pete? A third down and 23 now. Down he goes. Andre Wadsworth. 282 pound junior from Miami and the Seminoles are hot and that is the 62nd sack of the season they're concerned about the ends Wilson and Bulware and from the inside Wadsworth comes in he's had some injury problems that's only his third sack of the year they can get you from the inside or the outside Robbie Stevenson the punter 44 plus on the season both putters are very good. Pressure here. Blocked. They blocked it. And it's down at 
the two-yard line. It may have been Shevin Smith. There were three or four of them that came pouring in. Boulware looked like he was there, so we'll have a look at it. From the, from the left side, this is the sixth Boulware. punt. This is the sixth block kick of the year for Florida State. From over here, watches the outside man goes in outside, but the inside man is going to get it. Boulware, number 58. It's just a great layout and a big turnover for Florida State. Blocking kicks is not new at Florida State University. They have a history of it. Peter Boulware, number 58, has been catching attention all year, but it's because he's been sacking quarterbacks. In fact, he leads the nation in sacks with 19. He got two fullbacks in there with Rock Preston at tailback. And a glorious opportunity right here. They hand it to the up man. That would be Pooh Bear Williams. And there is very little there for Pooh Bear as the Gators stack it up. So it'll be second down and goal from about the three. This is a problem that the Seminoles have, Keith, when they get inside the five-yard line because all of their tailbacks are small. Dunn, Preston, and Feast are all small. They, they don't have a big back. The only big backs are their full backs that don't carry the ball a lot. Back when we did the Virginia game, remember uh, Pooh Bear Williams had the fumble yep. inside the 10-yard line. Second down and goal. If they don't get a touchdown here. The Gators will win this first. There it is. Pooh Bear. Those are altered cheers for the big old fullback. 286 pounds. That was before the pregame meal, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scott Bentley for the point. That's his first touchdown of the season. The kick is away. It's good. At 307 to play in the first quarter. The Seminoles block a punt, cash it in, lead 10 to nothing. Take a look at the uh, behind the defense. This is the offensive line, Keith. They're blowing off that defensive line. There is no penetration. He just gets in there and pushes them back into the end zone. First touchdown of the year for Kuber. The aerial shots you're enjoying today are coming from the Bud One airship, traveling throughout the year, appearing at many exciting sports events across the country. The man at the controls today, Matt Elkin. I'll do that. It's kind of a rough ride because uh, there's been wind gusts and you've seen the ball blown off the tee. Gusty stuff it can be relatively uncomfortable, I would think. Is that the guy that drove you over here to the ballpark today? No, that's the one that sent me under the bed last night. <laughs> oh, he's having a good time. Leave him alone. It's a festival when these two teams play. College football is a festival most every Saturday everywhere, but this one is man's time. Number one and number two. A game for the constituency. Since this is the capital city, this kick will go way back beyond the end zone. The wind is at their back going that way, so they get a little extra carry on the ball. And so Florida now shocked and pummeled already at 3.07 to go in the first quarter, and they need something to happen good for them. They've made two mistakes, Keith. Number one, Werfel threw an interception in Florida State's end zone. That turned the ball over. And secondly, when they couldn't get anything offensively, they had a putt block which the worst of the area of all is inside your own 10 yard line. And uh, Fred Taylor's very, very late getting onto the field. 
They were already at the line of scrimmage ready to snap the ball and <laughs> they wanted out there. And they get it off. Werfel throws it to him. Dropped it. So that play was probably doomed from the get-go. Well, the Gators are a little shook up, Keith. They, they're behind by 10 points. You mentioned earlier, they've only been behind twice uh, all season long. They made two critical mistakes. Their personnel group on the field is not correct. You know, Spurrier's going to say, hey, let's just get it together, guys. Relax and just take it down. He sends Elijah Williams out to the tailback position. He's the lighter at 185 pounds, but very quick and a good receiver. And he's in there right now in a very tight position, and he's going down the middle as a receiver. And Danny Werfel can't do a thing about it because the Seminoles have just eaten him up. Greg Spires, number 90. That's the second sack for the Seminoles. They're averaging six a game. And it's third down and 17 right now. The Florida State just jumping all over him right now. Williams pops out of there and gets up to about the 25-yard line where Shevin Smith, number 30, hit him right on the numbers and stopped him. That is short of the first down. Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, has got to really be happy with the way his defensive group is playing. Well, it'll be fourth and about five with a minute and 45 seconds to play in the first quarter. And here's Robert Stevenson again. Remember, he's a left footer. Olware came from the left side the last time. Or looking at it from the defensive side of the ball, the right side. This time he gets the full leg swing and gets it out. But it's into the wind. And there's going to be a penalty flag thrown downfield. One of the men downfield under the ball was number nine for Florida State. That was Peter Warwick. Somebody decked him, so it was probably that's what gets the flag. He's, he's saying, Mama, I got a headache. Who hit me? He didn't even have a chance. There's another flag back up here on the Florida State 40 and two flags down near the, the, uh, the Florida 40 and two flags down to the Florida State 40. Well, we may have foul on each side here. If we do, we'll kick it again. If it's a double foul. Illegal substitution. Against the defense. That's 12 men. Interference with the opportunity to test the kick. Kicking team will replay Offset. it down. So they'll get to kick it again, and that's uh, a break for the Gators. Otherwise, Florida State was going to have that football at around uh, midfield. Yeah. Well, there, I don't think there's any question that, uh, that he was hit too soon. I don't know what Spurrier was so upset about. The, uh, I'd want I'd want to re-kick it if I were uh, the Gators. Warwick is the deep man. Stevenson gets it out. It's a low liner. There's some room. Uh, number one got a piece of him, but now Warwick breaks it. He's got some help and taken down at the Gator 39-yard line. He was one man short in his ticket. Otherwise, he would have taken it home. 32-yard punt and an 18-yard return. Special teams advantage to Florida State. So far, it's a nice play by Capers, 23, not to block the man in the back. We've got a nice return going here. And, of course, the block punt earlier in the ballgame. The pregame comment of the two coaches was, Steve Spurrier, let's not give him a cheap one, special team. Okay? Right, right. His has collapsed so far. Bobby Bowden, we got to get pressure on Workle. If we can't, we can't beat him. All those things have happened so far. Busby going big. Warwick down under it. He's got it. Peter Warwick down under the ball at the two-yard line. So a 
huge play. The ball is inside the two. It's first and goal for the Seminoles. They lead 10 to nothing, and they're looking for more. Like the Gators got off the bus, but they left their heads when they uh, in the hotel when they left. They are not into this ball game, Keith. Everything is going away from them. They are not making the plays. This is Busby. Throws. Touchdown. Melvin Pearsall. Is that a flag? I see it a huddle by the officials. That usually means there's laundry on the field. Attack. Foul against the offense. He penalized on the kickoff. The celebration, celebration. Uh, yeah. yeah. Rule after the kickoff, and uh, it's going to be one of those days for the Gators. They're going to have to come from behind, and down right now, what, 16 points down. About to be 17 if Scott Bentley, the senior from Aurora, Colorado, can knock it through. Scott came in as a heralded freshman, has had a few bumps on his road. But is uh, heading down the home stretch in high style. That is good. And it's Florida State 17, Florida nothing, with 59 seconds to go in the first quarter. Here's a play that set up the touchdown. First down, right after the punt return. Busby looks to the right. Now he's got single coverage. Weary, number 24, doesn't see the ball. Warwick makes the play. Warwick sees it. That's a good catch. Yeah, that's a case of a, of a receiver making the well, play. He had the coverage. He just didn't make the play. And Busby, the more this goes on, the more his confidence level rises. Here's the touchdown. A little fake to the to our left. Right, when you when you're running and throwing the ball. You know, and then you can run the ball first down passes on the goal line. That's like stealing right there. That pass to Pearsall for the touchdown. Big old tight end got one. Yes, sir. They throw it to him down inside the five. <laughs> Here's a look at what Florida has done with their first three possessions. An interception, a block punt, and then a punt that was returned uh, for about 25 yards. Mike Hilliard and Elijah Williams are the deep people as Bentley has kicked it out of the end zone the previous times, but this one is caught at the seven and will be returned by Mike Hilliard. And the Gators now shot. Try to shake it off with Elijah Williams and Perry Jackson in the backfield. Different alignment here, looking for something different from the 45. First down, 48 seconds, first quarter remaining. Gives the ball to Jackson. Big play for Terry. The 213 pounder runs it all the way down to the Florida State 35 yard line. First down, Gator. Purple calling his play. Change the formation. Run it with Williams. A couple of yards, that'll do it. And time will tick out on the first quarter. Well, if you're wearing the red looking color there, the Garnet, isn't that what it is? Yes, Officially? Sir. Yes, sir. Then you're a happy camper. But the folks in white, they're kind of walking around saying, uh, hmm. Life is not so good. Elijah Williams is back there now with Danny Werfel. It is second down and eight for the Gators. The ball is on the Florida State 33. Werfel in trouble again. He's taken down by number 90, Greg Spires, his second quarterback sack, and here's what. Well, Keith, you know, this ball game splits families and who have been together and they've gone off to school. I've got two cheerleaders. Liz, who went to, goes to Florida State, and Tina, she goes to Florida. Now, how do you two girls handle this rivalry when you play each other? We just remember that family's first, and we love each other before anything, but I think that both of us really want our own team 
wants to win, so it's, it's really hard. It's just hard, but I love Tina. She's great. I hope you win now. And Tina? <laughs> yeah, we just try our hardest to cheer best for the team and do our best job, and we always remember that we love each other. Well, you've got your work cut out for you, Tina. <laughs> Key? It's hard, she says. It's hard. <laughs> I guarantee you. Gators have got a pretty good sized mountain to climb. Second down and 13 after that last sack. And the home crowd trying to help the defense. And they're coming, and that little quick pass is intercepted at the 35 yard line. Henry Crockett. Mike Hilliard was the man for whom the pass was intended, but I don't think Mike ever touched it. Florida State defensively is dominating this game. Werfel checking off, tries to hit the pop pass, doesn't see the interception because it's deflected up into the air, and, and Crockett, number 45, got through three turnovers for Florida in a little over a quarter. Willie Cohen's put the quarterback down on every play. The Noles are trying to put Werfel on his back. So it's first down for the Seminoles at their own 35-yard line. And here comes Warwick Dunn. And he makes you hold your breath if you're on the other side. You pick up about a yard on that play. Here's a look at the numbers in the first quarter. You notice the one turnover for Florida does not show the block punt in there. He's about the same time of possession, but it's the mistakes, Keith, the turnovers, and the, the block punt. Second down and nine, down again. Bates and Lawrence Wright. Lawrence Wright, the strong safety, was literally on the line of scrimmage that time and locked his legs at about the 40-yard line. So it'll be third and five. We're in the second quarter of play, 13-15 to go to the half, 17 to nothing, Florida State leading. The Seminoles have won seven of the last ten meetings with Florida. And all the Noles have to do if they can win this is back from Yolens. And Diet. <laughs> Busby's pass a little bit behind Peter Warwick. And incomplete. So here comes Sean List, the Florida State punter, onto the field, and he's a good one. Averaging uh, up around the middle 40s, just under 43 to kick. Jaquez Green is back. You give him a little daylight, and all you hear is a whoosh. pressure to speak of low kick though and green fumbles the ball but he covers it the game stories for florida state busby needs to have a big day and pressure work for well so far you've seen that fsu has averaged six sacks on the year per game they already have two here today and they've pressured him several other times you're so good you probably go home at halftime <laughs> He got this thing figured out. Elijah Williams and Terry Jackson. And the other thing is Florida isn't dead, let me tell you that. Werfel's pass intercepted by Vernon Crawford. Penalty flag on the field. Now, well, let's see about the flag. Gators are saying it's against the Knowles. Let's see. Interference. It is. Interception Perfect. goes away. Well, it's a tough one for Bowden, but uh, it's a big break for the Gators. Werfel, I don't know if the receiver that he was trying to get the ball was jammed to, but he just underthrew it. Crawford was right there. And how about the game plan put together by Mickey Andrews? So huh? far, it Ooh. is outstanding. But Letter perfect. But when you put pressure on a quarterback, Keith, I don't care how good he is. If he doesn't have time or doesn't think he's going to have time, he's going to throw it a little quicker. Well, uh, Danny has good reason not to finish <laughs> right about now. He <laughs> oh, yeah. Time. 
He's been on his back all day. First and ten. Werfels put some air under it. He's got Anthony down there. It's touchdown, Gators. Well, they call him out. No, they call him out at the one. They've called him on the chalk. Anthony comes back. He wants a debate. But they pull him away, and I thought he cantered in. But yeah. look for yourself. Here are your skill players. Outstanding speed at wide receiver and very good defensive backs. But this is just a streak. Anthony goes by him. Don't count the Gators out, Keith. They have too much skill and too much uh, uh, big play and explosiveness. 17 points doesn't affect him, and he is out. Yeah, he hit the chalk. Yeah, he is out. He could have made it in there if he'd have paid attention to it. But it's first down and goal from the one now for the Gators. And Werfel calls timeout. All right, Danny Werfel calls his play, had a conference with the coach. First and goal, throws it to the corner. It's touchdown, Jacquez Green. And so the Gators get on the board and ease some of the pain. Well, you got that right, Keith. They, they needed something positive to happen. They needed a, a big play. They needed, they needed what what other team in America on the first and goal on the one yard line would put three wide receivers to the right side and throw on first down? He's just throwing away. He knows that Cozy from film study probably knows that Cozy doesn't see the ball well when it's coming at him in the end zone. Bart Edmiston out of Matt Teague's hold and Michael Yonkin's snap makes the play. With 12-22 to go in the first half, it is now 17-7. Matt Teague from Keystone Heights will kick it off. Lavernus Coles and Deep Easter are the deep people for the Seminoles. Coles is 7 and Feaster 33. Eastern's a sophomore and Coles is a freshman, so he's got a lot of freshmen playing uh, all across the country in big ball games this year. It's amazing how many freshmen are playing in games that mean so much. That's over. That's over. Your base. Yes, indeed. Base, There's base. a whole lot of coaching going on on the floor. Well, and side. what they're doing, he's talking to the offensive line, trying to, to get the, the blocking scheme settled. Florida State's come out and really confused that offensive line. And one of the problems uh, for the Gators, again, is uh, inexperience in the offensive line. Oh, no question. We talked about that uh, before the game. So they have to hold it and kick it off. And it's on its way. Wind under it. And nose went together a yard deep in the end zone. But Coles is coming out with it and doing very well. Thank you. And he fights his way all the way out to the 34-yard line before they finally get a halter on him. So that's about a 35-yard return. In fact, though, you only get credit from the goal line. So here comes Mr. Busby and company as they lead 17 to 7. He's got that left wrist wrap. That's a hairline fracture that happened a few weeks back. Last week's injury uh, to Busby was a slightly sprained right knee. He's got a brace on his right knee. But, uh, he's in there giving it a go. He's Warwick four, Dunn is the deep man. Four of seven for Busby, 62 yards, one touchdown. Blue Bears blocking. Busby's throwing. Oh, 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 oh. Not all day. Now lets it go, and it is incomplete. It was Dunn who finally broke out of the pack realized that uh, what had been planned on the other side of the field wasn't working. So he dispatched himself and Shea Showers prevented him from catching it. Well, that was a play that Florida State had worked on during the week. Uh, first down, play action pass. They tried to slip him out. There was nobody out on the right side. They wanted to get done deep and uh, just didn't get him down there. Trailer was on the high side of your picture or on the other side of the field, and there's nothing over there for him at all. There's Mark on the left side. He is uh, ex quarterback, University of Miami. Backed up Jim Kelly. Coach for Howard Schnellenberger. Busby's pass is incomplete. 
pass was intended for E.G. Green. Not a pass intended for uh, Peter Warwick. The strength uh, of this. Who was it? Peter Warwick. Warwick. Yeah, number nine. The strength of this defense for Florida, Keith, are the defensive backs. Uh, it'll be a good battle all day. Busby against those defensive backs. Here's trouble, too. Cooper's coming in with play, number one. It's coming in late. You only got nine seconds to get this ball snapped. What a hurry. He made it. Just barely. That ball's thrown away. The receiver turned up field. Ball was thrown well behind him. And uh, seven holes don't do much with that uh, possession. Yeah, and that's what the, the Gators needed if you wanted to get... If you're a Gator wearing a Gator hat, uh, the momentum slightly shifting now. They've stopped uh, the Seminoles in the last uh, three possessions. Sean Liss is number 29. First kick was 30 yards. Wins right into his face. It's strong. No, well, that's not very good. Tail dragger though, might roll some. And it rolls inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. Fred Taylor, the deep back. Florida's ball on the 29. Nobody behind working. Changing his play. It's hard to do in a setting like this. They got him again. Number 96, Connell Spain. The other tackle gets a sack. So they're doing pretty well with Messrs. Wilson and Bowler, but Wadsworth and Spain now have three sacks between them. Exactly. It's the defensive tackles inside, Keith, the three defensive linemen that are getting the pressure on them. Look at here, Florida mistakes today. They've had two passes intercepted. They've had a punt blocked, and they've allowed three sacks. We played a little over a quarter. And they're coming again. Dump it off. It goes to Taylor. Taylor's got a first down. Taylor's all the way to the Florida State 38 yard line. But, but Keith, you know, you saw a shot of Spurrier over there on the sideline wringing his hands. For every action, there's a reaction. Spurrier finds out what they're doing, what they're doing well, and I've got something to counter it. It's a little screen pass up the middle. Let the lineman come, little flip there. If they're rushing me hard, I'll screen and draw. That's a great run there by uh, Taylor. Well, they, I mean, they've got big play people at every position. Yep, Keith. Fueled by frustration, nothing else. Yeah. First down from the 38 of Florida State now for the Gators. And Mac Gentry waves his arms and says Florida has called for a timeout. The crowd, 80,932. That is a new stadium attendance record. The previous record, 1995, when the Hurricanes were here from Miami, 80,350. And we had 80,230-something the, the Virginia game earlier this year. Look at the defensive line, Keith, the linebacker sneaking up in the defensive line. It creates problems for the offense. Werfel has a little time, gets it off. It is intercepted. No, drop. He had it in his hands, and as he fell, he could not hold it. It was Sean Hamlet. Ike Hilliard was down there, but Hamlet really was the only man with a chance to catch it. That ball was thrown to the inside. He expected him to be inside. There's a... Here's the offensive line blocking. Once again, oh, Werfel is on his back. He's getting hit every time every he throws time. it. He yep. expected uh, Hilliard, number 19, to be inside. I was watching him as he went downfield. The ball comes out late. He's, he made a little move to the inside and then jumped back outside, and Werfel had to throw it inside. Second down and 10. That's thrown to the outside. Hilliard's inside. They're not on the same page. And there's a flag. Come on, 
Personal foul on Florida State. So the Gators get a break. Well, these two teams, Keith, are the most penalized teams in their respective conferences. Gets the defense. Call it back first down, 15 yards. UK and Mickey Andrews reacting to the ball there. But you can hear the how hard the wind's blowing off the referee's microphone. That's Crawford 47 right there at the end of the play. I don't know if that was what they called or not. Five flags and 61 yards against the Seminoles so far. It is now first down Gators at the Seminoles 23. This is Taylor and Fred Taylor. Wigwags and slips and slides and squeezes and squirms and gets to the 19. He got four yards. This field is very firm, very fast field. It's a fast track, and Florida State wants it that way because they've got a lot of skill players, wide receivers, running backs, and DBs. That's the way they like it, but Florida, they like that recipe also. Jacquez Green is that man way down at the bottom of the picture. Anthony is a little closer to the ball. They're on the same side. Werfel puts it up. Nobody there. Again, they're not on the same page. Werfel was flattened again, and there's a penalty flag thrown right down where he was knocked down. Here's the call on the flag. Rough the passer on the defense. Half the distance. Call that first down. That's seven penalties on the Seminoles. Well, here's what Mickey Andrews' defense is doing. They're putting all these guys up on the line of scrimmage, and they're blitzing. Well, what he wanted to do was get a little fade straight down the sideline at the bottom of the screen. Blitz from the safety. That's just a mis miscommunication with the receiver. Yeah, that's that's a good call. That's that hits a little bit late. Elijah Williams in the backfield now. Penalty flag, the biggest ground gainer on this possession. And Werfel calls timeout. Seems as though Werfel is getting knocked out. No, he down. didn't either. They're charging this to Florida State. Yeah. Florida State called it. Say it looks like he's getting knocked down on every pass, Keith. Well, that's what Nebraska did to him in that bowl game last yeah. year. They hammered him on every play. But Werfel just gets up and goes about his business. Florida State with no more timeouts remaining now. That was the last one. Elijah Williams the running back. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Florida trying to score again. 17 to 7 ball game. Crowd coming up trying to help the defense. Pressure coming. Werfel's pass. Touchdown. Jacquez Green and a penalty flag right back there again. There were two Seminoles that just buried Werfel and the penalties against Florida State. The touchdown will count. Well, didn't he score? Yeah, he scored. He, the, the official just had it wrong. Here's Bulware from the outside. That's what they called, and that's a good call, Keith. They want to go for two? Are they going to go one? They're just lining up over there, and then they're going to shift over. You never know. That's the old <laughs> swinging gate. Right. They can do anything out of it. Edmiston. When you work with a, a spurrier ball game, it's kind of like working Hayden Fry ball game. You got to remember, <laughs> they got a lot of things in their pocket. Oh yeah. Bushels have stopped it. Pushing and shoving going on on the field. Ball, ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Trying to make it a 17 to 14 ball game with 9:29 to play in the first half. Took a long time to get order on the Gator side, but looks like they've finally gotten themselves into the ball game. 
Oh, that snap was almost bobbled away, but they get it down and get it up, and it's good. So Edmiston makes it, and now it is a three-point game. Well, the prize is considerable at the end of this one, and we have only one period left. Seminoles leading the Gators by three points. And here we go on third and 11. Werfel has a man, ball almost dropped. It is put away by Rydell Anthony. He's got a big play. He's thrown out of bounds all the way down on the Florida State 43-yard line by Dexter Jackson. This time he's going to have good protection. Watch the two offensive uh, tackles. Going to keep good protection. The receiver's going to come right into the middle of the field. The two tackles keeping the ends off. He got a lot of room to step up. That's what he's used to having during the season. But this Florida State defensive line has just been dominant. Jermaine Allen tight end did a pretty good job handling uh, Wilson that time too. Yeah, he gets getting some help. 43-yard line and working out of the shotgun. Wilfel lets it go. It's incomplete over the head of everybody. Ike Hilliard was the receiver in the area. And it'll be second down and ten. Let me show you, Keith, what they're doing against Bullware. They're trying to keep him keep Bullware at home, so they're double teaming him with the tight end. And the offensive tackle. Well, if they can keep doing it, poor Danny might be able to walk to the bus. Elijah Williams, the deep man in the backfield. Second and ten. It's caught. And it's good for a first down by Jacquez Green down at the 26-yard line. Just barely slipped through the arms of the defender. Look from behind the defense. Five-step drop. Quick pass protection. Just gets in there before Capers makes the play. Shevin Smith saves the touchdown. It's first down Gators at the Florida State 26. Crowd got kind of quiet there for a minute. Now they come up to help the defense. Pressure coming around, penalty flag is thrown, ball is in the end zone, caught, but hold on to you about the flag. I think you might have a holding call coming. Radell Anthony threw it, I mean, he caught it, as uh, it holding. is holding oh, Florida. Fair. Yep, thought so. As Werfel threw the ball, the referee let the flag go, and even though it was right on the numbers to Anthony, it's lost. A 79, uh, the right tackle Mo on the Collins. play. Uh, he got out of the screen. It's, no, that's not it, I don't think. I think it was up uh, maybe uh, Donnie Young, somebody up there in the line, but he threw it, the official threw it long before Werfel threw the ball. So they lose a... We, we go back to what we said, Keith, before, that the uh, Gators, the most penalized team, about 90 yards, maybe 85 yards a game in penalties, and like you said, it's not the yardage so much, but that took back the touchdown. Yep. 14 yards penalty, it'll make it first and 24 as he comes back to the 40 yard line. Out of the foul ball. Had that little short dump off, and they get something out of it as Anthony again. Now he stepped up. He's got, uh, he lost that last catch, so he would have eight catches in the ball game. That's a lot. Well, it was, these numbers haven't changed much. Uh, these are mostly offensive numbers. From the, first, from the half because third quarter was all defense. Nine possessions and nine punts by both teams. Third down conversions, not very good for either side. Second down, 11. Again, it goes to Anthony. He makes one little sidestep. That gets him past Colsey, and he gets it inside the 20. These uh, Florida wide receivers are pretty nifty after they catch the ball. Here's Lynch one. 
Well, Keith, Liddell Anthony is playing remarkable football when you look at that catch and consider this. The team doctor just told me he has a slightly separated left shoulder. That's why he came out, but he is still in the ball game and he's got to be hurt. Elijah Williams is in the backfield, but he's there more as a protector probably. Yep. Anything else? Here they come. Look at him. Oh, no chance. No chance. Dexter Jackson, the free safety, was right up in the crack. And he arrived just about the time that Danny Werfel took his second step. They got to block down the offensive line. Somebody's got to be responsible for that. That's the problem, Keith, with that, that aggressive defense where the linebackers are always sticking their nose up in between the defensive linemen. You don't know when to count them and not to. Here's an effort to tie from 41 yards by Bart Edmiston. He's got enough leg from this distance. He gets it up. No good. Stunning graphic, isn't it? 11 yards. Roughly 18 minutes of the second half. Warwick Dunn is the deep man. He's got the ball coming at him. Oh, he's just missed by somebody. But he's taken down at about the 25. Hey, Lawrence Wright is a guy who just almost cut him in half, but he just missed him. Now, we saw Bart Edmiston limping off the field. And I think right there, that may be where he hurt his foot. Let's go to Swanee. Yeah, KD, he, he hurt his knee a little bit, and, and it's nothing serious. Uh, the doctor said he'll be fine, but I, sometimes, you know, those kickers get a little twinge, and they're not quite sure what it is. So after they go talk to someone to be reassured, Keith. <laughs> what are you saying about <laughs> kickers? Uh, not, nothing directly. <laughs> that pass completed to Peter Warwick. Once a wide receiver, always a wide receiver. Once a quarterback, always a quarterback. <laughs> Once a big ugly, always a big ugly. <laughs> Third down and six after a four yard pickup. You done. We're all sitting here on a keg of dynamite, just waiting for something to happen. I don't believe the final score is going to be 17 14. I just don't. Well, there's a lot of uh, explosives out there on the field just waiting to be uh, set off. I mean, there's one guy, one man, 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Everybody else is right up there. And that's a great throw and catch to Warwick. And there's a first down for Florida State at the Gators 42 yard line. Take a look from behind the quarterback. Number four writes the free safety. Look at this open up right in the middle. He throws it right over the center. That's a nice throw and catch. You give the quarterbacks time, they'll hurt you. If you rush them and knock them down all day, they're less likely to hurt you. First down, Seminoles at the Gator, 42. 10 minutes, 11 seconds to play in the game. Busby back, has time again, and it is incomplete. Pretty good battle for the ball there between the Gaya Coles of Florida State. Anton Lott was with him. Busby says, come on, get the play in here. Get it in there quicker. Play. Incomplete pass, stopping the clock at 10.03. Quarterbacks like to get to the line of scrimmage with a lot of time left on that 25-second clock so they can check off if they want to. Now it's seven seconds. Snapped it at six. A soft pass going just over the line of scrimmage to Warwick Dunn. And that's another Seminole first down. Well, that's dangerous there. You can't cover him one-on-one. -on -one. It's man-to-man -man coverage all across the front here. Here's Dunn. He's going to come out of the backfield. He's got a little option. He can go one way or the other. And the linebacker right there has to cover him either way. He chooses to go inside. Busby gets him the ball, and he breaks the tackle. 
Johnny Rutledge had to leave the game. The outside linebacking position. Kelsey comes in for Florida. And the Seminoles are moving it from the 27. Here's Busby setting up, going for the corner. And it is incomplete and no fault of Busby. He threw the ball perfectly. But the uh, intended receiver, E.G. Green, and the defender kind of tangled their feet. And it didn't quite come off. He had a little trouble coming out of his break. We'll see it here. Right there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's no foul there. It's just unfortunate that he stumbled coming out of the move because the ball was high enough he could have adjusted yep. if he would have been there. That had six all over. 17-14 Florida State. Second down and 10. Ball at the Gator. 27. That's the time remaining in the ball game. A little short snap goes to Dunn. Dunn runs it over the right side down to the 20. It'll be third and three. Sitting home watching. Healing and rescue. Florida is going to go to Atlanta. Rouge. Done. He's got the first down. He's close to a touchdown. Out of bounds at the two yard line. Running left side. Good block by uh, Pooh Bear Williams up there. 81 is Pearsall, the tight end. Showers is number two. He's the free safety. He'll eventually have to get over and make the play. They give the ball to Williams, the fullback, and he gets his 285 or six pounds of rumbling. Or maybe a yard. Maybe a foot. Warwick Dunn has 168 yards rushing today. He has four catches for 24 yards. He has influenced at least 70% of the plays in the ball game that Florida State has run offensively. And he'll probably get it right here. On second down and goal from the one. and give it to the big man. And he does not get in there. He weighs 285 pounds, Keith, and he was kind of stepping over some people in there. You don't want to be on the bottom of that pile with poo coming through. And he'd, he'd leave a plate mark for a month. Here comes Lamar Glenn, the other fullback into the game. Well, he's going to be in the backfield. Messam has uh, come out. Now Messam is going to go back. Somebody else is going to come out. Take a time down here. Take a time out. That's what he's going to do. Well, there's somebody waiting to write a ticket for the Florida State Seminoles. It says New Orleans. Uh, maybe they just get up and ride, as Willie calls it, the old city of New Orleans over there. However, this is a chance for him to put it away. They give it to Williams. He does not budge it. Yes, he did. He did, too. He fell down. Second effort. He wiggled off the top and fell over the side and rolled into the end zone. His first lick, he was stone cold. But he kept on pounding and rolled out and in there. Defensive effort is solid to begin with right there. He's not over. Watch him spins to the to our right. And he gets in. across. No question. And Kevin Long, the center, shaken up. And has to come out. Big fellow from Somerville, South Carolina. Oh, that'd have hurt him. They, they, don't, they don't have any more season's uh, backup offensive lineman to put in there. 
Here comes your extra point try from Scott Bentley to make it a 10 point lead with 7.15 to play in the ball game, and he's got it. Remember now, a little while ago, Florida lost a touchdown on a holding penalty. Seminoles have come back down, and they have scored. And Stoops. Stoops after Pooh Bear rolled in. Twenty-four to fourteen for the Florida State Seminoles over the number one ranked Florida Gators. Seven fifteen remaining to play. The wind grabs the kickoff and it stuck very short. Terry Jackson runs under the ball and is returning it to the forty-yard line. Florida Gators come to put up time. So look at uh, the beating that Werfel has taken today. It's. 1924 out of 37 times he attempted to pass. He's been hit. 24 out of 37. That's what uh, Florida State wanted. That pass deflected at the line of scrimmage. Looked like incomplete. Greg Spires knocked it down. The number one scoring offense in the nation. Their possessions in the second half. Florida is averaging 49 points a game. Over the last 10 years, Florida State has won seven, lost two, tied one. Werfel's pass is completed to Ike Hilliard at midfield. And they'll give him possession on the Florida State 49. First down. 655 to play in the game. Spurrier has only beaten the Seminoles twice in the seven times he has played them while at Florida. And he's never beaten them up here in game in uh, Tallahassee. Goes to Jackson. And Jackson can't get it going at all. Spires is there. Saunders coming up out of the secondary. Troy Saunders, a cornerback, got a lick on him. Seminoles uh, protect their home turf pretty well. It'll be second down, 11 for the Gators. Here they come. He got it off. He's got Green. Green can't run it down. Green went inside just a little bit to set up Capers to get away from him. And in the process of coming back, he was not able to run it down. Even with his great speed. Green remembers the young man who had the dislocated hip last year in that final game and made a remarkable recovery. Florida does not want a non-conference road game under Spurrier because they don't play many non-conference games on the road. They haven't come to the games there. Third and 11 for the Gators at 5.52 and trailing by 10 points. That was a chance there, Keith. That was a great opportunity. Yep. He had time to throw. Whistles right by the ear of Radell Anthony, and it is incomplete. That's what a bump can do to you when you're in the bump and run circumstance. It disarmed Anthony. Yep, never saw the bump. That knocks him off track a little bit, and then Darrell Bush, the middle linebacker, got a piece of him. And they're going on fourth down and 11. This might be the game. It might be right here. They're coming. The ball's up. A lot of air under it, and it's incomplete. Ike Hilliard couldn't run it down. One more time, Danny Wood. 
Horford hits the ground hard. The theory has been the same. Mickey Andrews put pressure, put pressure on the quarterback. Let's see, get all these guys in his face. Now you got one on one. Can you hit the deep throw one on one? He doesn't have long to wait. He's got to throw it way ahead of time. Just lay it out there and hope the speed catches up to him. Not today. Oh, that's a lick. Got to throw it soon. That receiver, Keith, is probably only 12 yards downfield when that ball is let go. And he's trying to keep connected probably 35 yards downfield. So the man from Alabama, Bobby Bowden, is standing on the edge of something big here with a football team that may very well be on its way to New Orleans. And you figure it's got to be if Nebraska can beat Texas next Saturday, probably the Cornhuskers. And here comes Dunn. Florida has three timeouts remaining. Florida State obviously is going to try to run the ball, do whatever it takes to keep the clock running. You look in the background, Steve Spurrier, upper left, through his uh, clipboard and everything else because quarterbacks, that's all they ask for is one-on-one -on -one with a receiver that's got some speed. Just give me one-on-one -on -one and nobody else back there. And today, they have not been hitting him. Second down, nine, really. More than eight, it's, it's more than eight. Here goes Dunn. He gets another two. The important thing is the clock is running. It is Warwick Dunn running the ball again on third down and long. And, uh, he didn't get, in fact, he lost maybe a yard. A little bit of a skirmish breaks out, but the officials handle it quickly and efficiently. And it's going to be fourth down. It is fourth down and seven for the Florida State Seminoles. They lead 24 to 14. They must punt now. Three minutes and 56 seconds as the ball is snapped. He gets it away cleanly and knocks it into the end zone. And it'll come out to the 20 yard line. So it was about two yards too long. And the Gators will try to come now from their 20, trading by 10. The decisive drive here, the only drive of the second half by either team, 75 yarder for the touchdown. Bart Edmiston, the University of Florida field goal kicker, right there on crutches with an ice bag on his knee, and that came from kicking the ground after missing a 41-yard field goal try, uh, kicking in frustration. In frustration. I don't know if he hit the ground or he just kicked the air, Keith, but uh, certainly holds something in that knee. And Florida's, Florida's got 347 to go. They may need a field goal kicker if they hope to tie this game. Werfel is flushed. And one more time is knocked down. He gets it out to about the 27. It'll be second down and three. That was probably one of the only times that Werfel has run from the pocket today. And that's what uh, Mickey Andrews and Bowden, the defense uh, for Florida State, knows that he's not going to scramble outside the pocket. They don't roll out. Well, the receiver. Jacques Green got tangled up in a bump and over there by the defender and uh, was never in the play. So it is now third down and three. And 308 to play in the ball game. got the first down on this pass to Ike Hilliard up at the 35 36 yard line and we're 259 to play.
Hilliard looks like he's uh, walking a little lightly there. These are the guys that can take the ball and run a long way, the wide receivers, but Hilliard right there. He's leaving. Looks like he's been dinged a little. It is incomplete. And a penalty flag, and a penalty flag is coming up against Florida State's Mario Edwards, I think. Riddell Anthony had the ball, and it looked like that, uh, that uh, Mario Edwards had grabbed him. Fifteen-yard penalty and a first down, if that's what it is. Pass interference. Yep. How many flags was that now? Ten on Florida? Eleven. Eleven, Eleven flags on Florida State. Wow. Mickey Andrews, uh, that uh, Edwards the, is a redshirt freshman. That foul was called. He is a backup. Mickey just plays him. He says, I'm playing eight or nine, ten defensive backs. I remember uh, his philosophy is, you know, I'll coach next year's team this year. I'll, I'll always have some depth. He just going for a national championship. He plays him. That ball is thrown high, lofted in the air, and it falls incomplete intended for Riddell Anthony. They need a little help out there from somebody else. Jamie Richardson needs to get involved and make a play. He hasn't seen the ball. He hasn't been open. Well, the receiver is going to be in the middle, but he's going to have a lot of time. He's going to be open, but he doesn't have much time to throw. Look. He's got to throw it way early. You got to adjust to that ball. You got to come back to the ball. Second and ten from the 49 of Florida State. 2:38 to play, as you see. That's the time remaining in the game. Worker steps away and now is caught behind the line of scrimmage. And it's Renard Wilson this time getting him. That's the sixth sack. Of Werfel today, and the first one for Wilson. Lock running, coming up on two minutes. Third and twelve. Werfel throws it hard and has a man. And the play is good for a first down at about the 35-yard line of Florida State. And that will move the chains and stop the clock at 151 to play in the game. 24-14. Florida State 10-point lead. Only one touchdown scored in the second half of this ball game. That was by the Seminoles on a 75-yard surge, and that's about all they've done in the second half. It's that been was defense. The, the only possession that they had. Defense, the defense, defense. Werfel throwing for Anthony. He's got it. And he's down at the three-yard line. He caught it over Mario Edwards. Well, this is what you've been looking at all day. One-on-one -on -one coverage, tight coverage. They've thrown this 15 times and maybe only hit it twice. Not a very high percentage, but they score here. Be some excitement on that uh, kickoff. A minute and a half to play in the game. Penalty flag. Jacques Green was held by Samari Rowe. Rowe had his arms all over. And I'm pretty sure that's what the call is going to be. Interference, pass interference, defense. Yep. First down and a two-yard line. Florida did this earlier down in the same position. They must have uh, read something. We're just throwing it out there, and he didn't think that the... Uh, yeah, that's clearly holding. Clearly holding. They just wanted to do that. Throw it out there to the receiver one-on-one. -on -one. That time... Uh, that cost him 10 seconds. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. You've got a Seminole coming out, shaking up. That's Bowler, yeah. I 
thought he was indestructible. He just uh, went out of gas. <laughs> he played some football game. Wow. All right. First and goal from the two. Anthony, touchdown. Riddell Anthony went up higher than anybody else and made the catch. The Florida State's kicker, Edmondson, is hurt. I, I wonder, take a look at the touchdown. It, it was throwing jump balls in the end zone. He's throwing it up there, and their guys are going and getting it. Matt Teague can do kickoffs. Collins Cooper is uh, a kicker, so he's the sophomore kicker, and Cooper is in. He hasn't kicked many this year. No, he has not. Now's a good time to start your career. There it is. Banged it right up and in. And he's going to have to be the guy that kicks the tying field goal if That's it ever right. gets to that point. That's right. 119 to play in the game. We got the skins game coming up in just a few minutes. Here's a case of a guy just wanted it more than I guess than anybody else because he just went up and got it. Well, the Gators going into the game thought this would be good down inside the five-yard line. Just line up one-on-one. -on -one. Close. He never quits. He <laughs> just never stops. He's something. I admire both these teams. They're full of grit, aren't they? They certainly are. Just need one foot inbound. If that toe possession of the ball is on that chalk, yeah. he's out of bounds. And the official right there. We had a nice shot of the official looking right at him. So Teague will kick it off now for Florida. And the Seminoles don't have anybody back there. It's empty back in the from the 30-yard, 28-yard uh, line on. There's nobody. Because they're anticipating onside kick. Got all of the good hands people up there. And it's open right down the middle of the field. Rock Preston is the only person in the middle of the field. Hit it hard. And did it go through clean? If they went through clean, it'll be Florida State's ball. And there's the penalty flag. Hold on. That could mean a uh, just kicking it out of bounds, which is normal. He kicked it hard. The reason he kicked it hard is he's ricochet. hoping to hit one of the Florida State players. But he didn't, and it's Florida State football. Out of bounds. They'll take the ball at the inbound spot, first and ten. Seminoles did a nice job of getting out of the way. Watch this. Both teams work on this all the time, even though you don't see it very often in a the game. They know if it's if it's kicked <laughs> if it's kicked hard, get the heck out of the way. <laughs> but this is just good coaching, you know. You work on it from both sides. All right, 119 to play in the ball game. They're probably out walking around the first tee trying to find a television set to watch the finish of the game. They, they don't want to start till this is over. They don't want to start no. And that's going to be a first down for Warwick Dunn. Florida has two timeouts left. One eleven, and timeout called by the Florida Gators. They have one left. Bobby Bowden said earlier in the year, Keith, that his offense was not where he wanted it. Well, Danny Cannell graduated last year. Thad Busby stepped in, was a little bit inconsistent early on in the year. He's had three games over 300 yards passing, but but he said we're not 
we all, you know, we we got the feeling that they were pointing for the Florida game. We did the Virginia game about midseason, and they defensively and offensively. He said, we're just getting better. He says, we hope to be where we want to be down at the end, and I, he's, he's, he's there where he wants. He's ahead with about a minute to play. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Danny Werfel of the Florida Gators with 23 of 48, 362 yards, and he's been hammered on all day. Warwick Dunn influenced the entire ball game offensively for Florida State. 184 yards, he's over 1,000 for the third successive season. 24 yards uh, receiving. They are the Chevrolet most valuable players of this ball game, with Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. There were a lot of people who could have gone home with that today, but most of them were defensive players. Most of them were defensive <laughs> players, but it's uh, kind of kind of funny that we wind up with the two offensive players, but they were so dumb. The ball is on the 40, 39-yard line of Florida. One minute and four seconds to play. Florida State 24 and Florida 21. Here it comes. This was always one of my favorite formations right here. <laughs> you knew you had the game one, and all you got to do is just take the ball and take a knee. That gets the clock going. Gators have no more timeouts. That's 50. Well, Ann, you might have to buy him a new suit. You got to go to New Orleans. And they don't have to play a game before that. They no, just sir. sit around and rest up and get ready. It looks like it'll be Nebraska. Uh, Possibly if they can beat Texas. If, if they can beat Texas. And Florida State. You know what? They look just alike almost. Uh, Nebraska is a little more option on the offense, but the defenses play much the same. Yeah. It will be a war. It will be, it will be a defensive struggle. Right? So the Florida State Seminoles under Bobby Bowden will surely move to number one. And then wait until the Nokia Sugar Bowl in New Orleans for their chance to claim a national championship. And that snap of the ball will do it. Steve Spurrier and these Florida Gators playing for the Southeastern Conference Championship must try to forget their bruises, pump up their pride, and march on Atlanta next Saturday night to play the Alabama Crimson Tide, which we'll have for you at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Your final score, Florida State 24, Florida 21. Here's Lynn Swan. Bobby, congratulations. Is this the biggest win for you all time? No, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> you know, I'm not giving Florida that credit. Okay. <laughs> no, it's a mighty big one. It belongs to the kids. I've got nothing to do with it. All the kids play great. Defense, offense, and kicking. I'm just proud of them. You win the locker room at halftime. You take Kate you came out. If Florida will let you, you want to let Warwick Dunn carry the football. That's exactly right. And I want us to quit getting penalties. We were in complete charge of this darn ball game. But we got a penalty, and a penalty, and a penalty, and a penalty. And that last touchdown, they got two good penalties. You also have a date you want? Yeah, I hope so, Bobby. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you, Bobby. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, he's something. <laughs>